Hi, everybody. It's Neil. I'm here with uh, the two crazy cat ladies, Jay Kennedy and Adrian Lefebvre, uh, joining me today from Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, hi, ladies. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. So good yeah. to see you. Yes. Well, I have to admit, you're two of my favorites. I, I get your top fan badge, so um, I do watch regularly. <laughs> 100% mutual. 100%. So the two crazy cat ladies um, have a website called the two crazy cat ladies dot com. Yes, two crazy and, com. Yeah, and uh, and I will include that in the description for you as a speaker uh, in the Growlies talks. Um, I wanted to uh, just make sure that people understood that you retail goods. Uh, you social media uh, communicate with a community of cat lovers, and you offer advice and investigate further information for that community. Am I correct? Yes, I'm nailed it. Yep. Perfect. Okay, and so if you have any interest in cats, and if you're watching this video, you do join up with the two crazy cat ladies. They even have a VIP club where they offer more one-on-one -on -one information for all of us to to learn from. Okay, so going forward from there, I just want to hear a little bit about how you guys started. Um, your first cats that you introduced to a fresh food diet, and, um, and how, how long ago was this before you became the famous Two Crazy Cat Ladies? <laughs> I don't know if you call it famous, but um, okay, so 14 years ago, back in 2005, we um, started working in our family business, which was in pet nutrition, supplemental um, nutrition and so that's we kind of just got thrown in because it was our family and um, started learning a, a lot about the pet food industry and how that works and uh, the supplemental industry and how that works um, but 10 years later we're you know but we always had cats and the rest of our family had dogs and so fast forward um, that entire 10 years we didn't really get much information about our own pets uh, we knew all about the digestive tract of dogs and what to do for dogs, but we didn't know, no one, even in our own industry, had any answers for us when it came to one of our cats having a, an issue. So um, back in 2015, we branched off and started um, our own business as the Two Crazy Cat Ladies and offering uh, feline-specific products for um, all natural holistic, uh, we have an all natural holistic line of supplements for cats. Um, but did a deep dive of research so that we could be the resource that we so long to have um, that we that we couldn't find prior to this. So what was the first product you sold? The very first product was Catalyst. Catalyst. Yes. And what's Catalyst? Catalyst, Catalyst is a mixture of digestive and live antioxidant enzymes. It's it's um, we rave about this product. It's a very product. versatile product. It's an amazing right. product. It works in a lot of different ways. We digestive know. enzymes, so, so it aids with digestion? It aids with digestion, but the, the antioxidant enzyme superoxide dismutase um, reduces inflammation as well as builds synovial fluid and things like that in the body. So it's really good for joints, for skin, um, skin for any kind of um, digestive um, inflammation. And, and then, of course, the digestive enzymes really help with digestion as well. So that was, that was our first product and, and still our favorite. I take yeah. it every day myself. That's exciting. Awesome. Okay. And so uh, uh, from there, you, uh, th you got into it. You came out with this line of products. Uh, what started you with fresh food specifically? Because that's our, our focus at the talks. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we started learning, right? We just start learning more and more about cats. And we started following people like um, Dr. Lisa Pearson and Dr. Karen Becker and learning about now learning about fresh feeding, which our past business didn't talk much about. They didn't, they didn't focus on, um, on fresh feeding. We've had a very high quality, uh, very kibble. expensive kibble. Yeah. So yeah. that's what, that's what was recommended to us. We hear that a lot. Yeah. In the store. We don't sell kibble. So we have a lot of people coming in and defending their use of it and then mentioning that they sell the highest quality one. Right. right. Yes. You're a purist. <laughs> I think it's a broken form myself, but I don't, um, I can't judge. They're doing the best that they think they can do by their pets. Yeah. Well, and the more we learned about cats, the more we learned about um, how detrimental, especially to cats, kibble can be. Mm. So that we switch them and, and how they really need a moisture rich diet because they have a low thirst drive. And mm -hmm. so they're not like dogs, they're not going to get their water that they need from the water bowl. They really need it from their food. So 
um, and, and it's leading to kidney disease and urinary issues and all of that. So we switched them to a canned food diet and then we did a ton of research on raw food and we spent a long time <laughs> doing research on raw food and like barely touching it, you know, kind of doing a literally little Literally barely touching it for me. I was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then our oldest cat, he was 18 years old at the time and he was diagnosed with a kidney disease. And I had done enough research at that time that I knew that this was the changing point. This was the, this is the point that we needed to switch them to a raw diet. So that was, that was the moment that was four years ago. Right. And we uh, transitioned them and he transitioned within a week. He was an easy cat. He was smart. I say with age comes wisdom. So, um, because he was older, he was like, this is what my body needs. Um, he was easy. Our youngest was the most difficult. Uh, to transition and took some time and patience and perseverance. Lots of that. Um, but he lived and thrived. I mean, thrived for another four years. Um, and I mean, jumping from you know jumping from counter to counter. He went from going downhill to going uphill yeah. um, by switching his diet um, and and adding in some supplements and things like that. But but mainly it was that diet change that made the biggest difference for him. And his yeah. kidney levels never went up. Well, and to be fair, you, you know, you asked which were, were our first cats that we did this with. Uh, you know, Dodge was 22 when he passed in December, almost 22 when he passed in December. Um, so he had, I was very young when I found him, and he had a lot, I think Dr. Karen calls it nutritional abuse or neglect in a way, um, the majority of his life, really. And even though, you know, we switched him to a high quality kibble when he was about 12, um, and then onto the wet food, but it was, uh, you know, a lot of what we're so passionate about is because we've experienced, uh, the reality of, um, the other way. And mm -hmm. that's my big regret is that we didn't, that I wasn't more open to switching to a fresh species appropriate diet. Much to be honest, un unless you go looking for it, you don't get told that there's fresh food options for dogs and cats. Exactly. And there's so much mongering out there too. Yeah. I mean, the media, the you know, and these big pet food companies, they they really put the fear of uh, raw food into yeah. you. And yeah. so it's yeah, it's a little scary to take that leap. It was very scary for me. It wasn't and for me. I worked in in marketing in software firms. That's my background, and um, that's called fear, uncertainty, and doubt (FUD). And those are spread. That's actually a mechanism that marketing firms use in order to undermine the efforts of the competition. And when you're making billions of dollars a year, you can spread a lot of FUD. That's yeah, a lot of FUD. Yeah. And you know what's interesting too is going back to Scotch being diagnosed with kidney disease, and we had a veterinarian that we really, you know, she was a wonderful woman. Um, uh, but there was a pivotal moment of big disappointment when we would not take the prescription food uh, mm. out the door with us that day. And, you know, now to see, speaking of techniques, you know, to, to know now that uh, prescription diet has been trademarked, it's not something, you know, it makes us think this is what they need and, and we have to pay more and it has to be special. Uh, when in fact, when you can take some time to understand how nutrition works, the, the fresh food uh, diet is so much better for, for them. And that prescription diet is, is literally a, a marketing gimmick. And yeah, well, and I would, I would even say, you don't even have to take time to understand nutrition. You just have to take time to get out of the, uh, get out of their world and use some common sense, right? Yeah, because I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, it's very, you don't, I, we don't, I don't understand nutrition as much as, you know, we don't formulate our own diets for our cats. Um, we still purchase or use somebody's recipe when feeding our uh, our cats. So yeah. I don't even know. I wouldn't even say that we know a whole lot about nutrition, but we do know the basics of uh, common sense. When yeah. You, right. you know, a fresh food yeah. diet is better than a processed diet. What, whatever being you are, that is always going to be better. Yeah, absolutely agree. Can't can't disagree uh, less. I mean, ultimately, uh, the. The, the big difference is fresh foods make a difference in all our lives, whether it be your dog, your cat, your hedgehog, or, or your family. Uh, moving from a processed food or boxed food diet to a fresh food diet has tremendous benefits. Exactly. Right. And I think and it's that's just common sense. Yeah. It's interesting to see too that there, you know, in the past hundred years of, of processed food becoming so popular, available, uh, affordable, the, the amount of degenerative disease that plagues us 
and and that's mirrored as well in in yeah. our in our cat feline friends uh, and in our dogs. I mean, it is it is something that's when you take a step back and you look at it, uh, just the basics. It does make so much more sense. And I, you know, the thing that really kind of was a tipping point for me was, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of zoos per se. I love that there's rescue, but um, you never see you never see a lion or a tiger getting fed a big bag of kibble. You know, it's it's remarkable when you think about what it is that our cats need and and what it is that helps them to thrive. And and you can see like over generations there being uh, an increase in degenerative diseases. Uh, it does not mean that we can't do what we can do. You know, do our best. And once we know better, we do better. And to see those results has been so exciting. There's nothing more exciting than um, seeing health and happiness in your pet and then being able to share that with someone else as well. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And, and I mean, it, it reinforces the point that the only animals that are ever obese or diabetic are ones fed by humans or eating our garbage. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yes. Yep. You know, and uh, when left to their own devices, they know what to eat. Right. And in the case of dogs and cats, it's prey. Right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And we control that, you know, and that's why I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a responsibility of the pet parent to understand that you um, are the ones choosing what your pet eats, you know, and just like if you have a human child, right? I think it was Karen Becker that said, you, you never hear a, a pediatrician, um, is that a kid's doctor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never hear a pediatrician say, um, your, your child should only eat this one brand of food, of processed food, for the rest of their lives. And you can buy it for me. Right, and you and you have to buy it for me, and this is going to be the healthiest thing for them. But but in the veterinarian industry, we hear that that is very common actually. That they should only be fed one food, and it's a processed food, and it should be fed for the rest of their lives. And, and we, then, have to, we have to be the parents because we're the ones choosing. And there's no other medical profession that would require or say that fre that that processed single processed food diet is better than a fresh food diet than veterinarians. It makes no sense that they still say it and that they still say it with conviction as if you shouldn't question it, even though they're your employee. So this is where we talk about advocation, advocating. So you are clearly good, strong advocates for your pet's health with your veterinary practitioner. Not only do you go and find the best practitioner who works with you, but you then advocate for what you feel is the best for your pet. Talk about, talk to me about that. How do you have the strength to do that? And at what point do you decide to do that in that conversation? Well, I think it's, I think it's honestly just understanding like what you just said, that you are, that they, they work for you basically, and that you are your pet's advocate. So when you take on that responsibility and you think about them as your child, if you think about them as your family, then, um, then you, you are going to stand up. I was, it, it was a rough road for us. We went through probably, <laughs> I don't know, 10 or 12 it. different, um, veterinarians. And, and I ended up, uh, I blacklisted from some of them and <laughs> butting heads because it was like, no, I'm not, you know, so it was, it was kind of a rough road until I realized that I needed to grow up a little bit and have that conversation in advance and say, right. and get mad at them. Instead, I, you know, now when we um, are interviewing a veterinarian, we go in and we say, okay, this is who we are. Um, we believe in, you know, fresh feeding. We believe in um, supplementation. We don't believe in over medicating or over vaccinating or any of this stuff. Are you okay with that? If we're going to take you on as our veterinarian, <clears throat> and we've had way better right. results doing well, it that and, way. And and to speak to this, I mean, I think that it's really important uh, when you're in the natural field like this. It's easy to feel defensive or disrespected or all of that when when I think it's very important to understand that veterinarians are veterinarians because they love animals it's not like they were like well I'm gonna go you know three hundred thousand dollars in debt in debt and uh, you know get paid minimal amount of money and have crazy days where I'm dealing because with I some heartbreaking things yeah. right I mean I think that it's very important for us to have that kind of consideration um, of what the world is that they grew up in what their education is a respect for that and also to be clearly honest with them about where we're coming from. That communication key, I think, is so important because 
natural or not, we need our veterinarians yeah. at times. And it's very important, I think, and we've, done, we've made this mistake where we wait until there's something terribly wrong and then we rush to them and say, fix this. And then we have a, an impassioned argument about how it's going to be handled. Right. And that's unfair. It's unfair to our cats, first and foremost. And it's unfair to our veterinarian who has no idea what Absolutely. the history of this animal is and where we're coming from. I mean, it's like you said earlier, you never hear about this. It kind of comes out of left field. It's not something that's really promoted. It's something that's more engaged and sought after. Yeah. So I think it's really important to remember that when we are on that natural path to be uh, communicative about where we're coming from yeah. so that we can have that honest conversation and, and then move forward together. And understand that they're humans too, right? It's not just it's, the fact that um, it's, it, 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 what's happening is that the system is broken, right? I mean, we've talked to, since becoming the two crazy cat ladies, we've talked to several conventional veterinarians, beautiful, wonderful conventional veterinarians that are, that will be very honest with us and say, we weren't taught this. This is what science shows us. This is what science says. And so this is, and I can lose my practice if I, yeah. if I recommend anything other than, you know, A, B, and C. Um, so, so they've never, you know, and their nutritional courses are taught by the same pet food companies. Awesome. That, yeah. That they, uh, that they have to recommend. So, and, and sometimes their education is paid for by those same pet food companies. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a system. It's a system that's broke here. I do believe that the BCVMA, the British Columbia Vet Veterinary Medical Association here that um, licenses the veterinarians in my jurisdiction, um, I do believe they have, a, uh, they have rules around recommending raw in that they're not allowed to. Right. Well, so we, you won't hear about this at a vet. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. You'll, you'll find we, one, of our, one of our most favorite vets is uh, that we take our babies too. She's a conventional veterinarian. She's feline only, and she is so proactive. She's always learning. She's all, you know, she's somebody who um, cares deeply, and I think all vets do, but she's very open to understanding that sometimes the one way is not the only way, and she's uh, very honest with us very about, great you know, us. when we thought that Mr. Biddles was having uh, issues with pancreatitis, perhaps. She said, you know, she asked if we were using omega-3s and she asked, you know, digestive enzymes right, and she, you... before we try to treat this medically, let's mm -hmm. try some of these things. So oh. it's very encouraging that, you know, communication can open up, uh, you know, it can really bridge that gap that's going on. I think that we find that some people that are really in the natural uh, have a disdain almost for veterinarians. And I feel like we, yeah. we can't have that. It's, it's really, um, you know, it's cutting off your nose despite the face. We... Our, our cats need both. And I think that being able to be honest about it gently, diplomatically, openly is going to do so much more for our cats and for the community at large, uh, moving into a new space that is going to be able to consider what's actually best for our cats. Yes. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. Like that's Exactly correct. I mean, we need um, a good veterinarian as me much as we need a good diet and a good uh, uh, stress-free household, uh, so on and so forth. The more uh, that we can offer those kinds of things, the better. And your tip of, you know, interview your vet ahead of time rather than during a crisis to find out his values or her values don't align with yours at all. That's a terrible time to learn that. Horrible situation. <laughs> yeah, Jay learned that a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It took me. It took me a little while. <laughs> yeah, but and again, that goes to being a proactive pet parent as well, though. Of recognizing, I think cats um, are are sometimes neglected in the way of they're very stoic. We don't necessarily know something's wrong until something's very wrong. Yeah. Uh, those annual exams or biannual once they get to a certain age their dentals doing things that are you know it's not like we need to go spend 250 dollars to have this done and get the blood panel and that but that's what we need to do as proactive cat parents not just so that we're building that relationship with our veterinarian so that our veterinarian can see how our cat is progressing and how our cat is responding to any changes in the diet or anything that environment whatever it may be they can they can know our cat. We don't just come in and say, fix this. Uh, but that there's this, you know, we can look at it holistically and, and move forward like that. So you mentioned um, dentals. So I have a question for you. Do you feed bones? Do you let them clean their teeth? 
We, so yeah, so we there's <clears throat> so cats are cats are a little bit difficult. Um, okay. Can I give you some tips? When it comes to raw Ooh. meaty bones. Can I give you some tips? Yes. And literally some tips. Um, I sell them the little chicken wing tips. They're just a little wing tip. It's not the whole. So, you know, when you're looking at a chicken wing, we're looking at three parts, right? So it's like the, 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 the drumstick, the two bone piece, and the little wing tip. Just the wing tip, you give that to cats. You leave it on the side of the plate every day. They're cheap. I sell them for three bucks a pound, not even three bucks a pound. They're cheap because they're normally waste, right? So you, you, you just the wing tips. You'll have to talk to a butcher to save them for you because normally he would send them with his waste to the rendering facility, right? So just the wing tips, you leave it on the side of the plate. Often they'll use it as a toy to kill, but eventually they'll eat it. And once they start eating it, that's brushing their teeth and it's tiny, it's not gonna do a great job, but what it's doing is it's building their ability to chew. And once they're wolfing those back like there's no tomorrow, then you build them up to tiny little chicken necks. And tiny little chicken necks. Next is where we started. And oh, okay. See, that's hard though because they don't have the muscles. Well, and, and, and here's the other thing is that we're not consistent with it. So right. we, we got the chicken necks. We, we didn't try right, it next to their times. food. We, we waited till like their snack time and gave, that, that, that gave them that instead. And <laughs> they look at me like I'm dumb. And, what, you know, a couple of them might lick a little bit, but they don't like not. They don't know what to do. Now there oh. is bone in their food. So yeah. they do the crunch and, and, and yep. get the bone in their food. So, so with the necks, um, get a meat mallet and crush them up for them because they don't have the chewing capacity to do it. So you'll have to masticate the neck somewhat for them. They'll still have to get through the tendon and the smaller bits of bone now that you've mashed up the malleted neck. And that malleted neck will, even cats who can't chew as well as the guys who you've trained with the wingtips, they'll be able to get through those necks because they know it's chicken. They want to eat it. They just don't know how. So when I got a seven-year-old lab, he had, she had never seen anything like a turkey neck in her life, right? So she, I gave her one and she picked it up and she was proud and she carried her, she, they pack it around the house, carried it around the house, drool running, proudly carrying it, had no idea what the heck to do with it though. And so I held it for her. Oh yeah, this, I held it for her. We played pull and toy. And once she sent crunch, she knew what to do. Yeah. But until I showed her, they don't necessarily know what to do with that item. Yeah. You lick it, they're interested. They're like, but I don't know what the hell to do with that. Yeah. So after they're doing the necks and you're not crushing them up, whole quail. Yes. Oh, I, yes. Yeah, just recently yes. saw uh, somebody. Who was it? it was Rachel. Rachel Pissarro. Yeah, we sell those. So they're fantastic. Whole quail. Crunch, crunch, crunch. They look like a little turkey in your cat's bowl. In your cat's bowl. Yes, wow. I want to try that. Okay, so we do need to try that. Yeah, I think you we know, just have to be a little more consistent with it. It's not something we can play with with them necessarily because cats aren't like dogs in that way. Maybe Zorro, but maybe. But you, you can't like. But we can help entice. Them. But we can help. Yeah. Entice them. yeah. And, and you can give them the opportunity. Right, making yeah. it available. I mean, it's very much like transitioning. I, yeah. It sounds to me, I, yeah. you know, it's like they don't really know what to do. And and to your point, until you took the time to teach her what to do with it. Uh, you know, it, it's very much, we teach our cats what food is. Yeah. So when we had kibble their whole life as, as Scotch and Biddles and, well, Twist for much of his life had, uh, you know, the, even the wet food was a little bit boring. You know, it's, yeah. it's, and you slowly transition or take it at their pace. But so what about transition? How do you transition a cat? What do you guys recommend? Well, our, our first recommendation or our first, um, words of encouragement are when it comes to cats patience and perseverance pays which is what we should take our own advice when it comes to raw meat bones. bones you need yeah. a shirt you need a shirt yeah patience and perseverance pays i like that, we'll put that on our, our neck shirts yeah um, but yeah so um you you really have to be uh, persistent with it it's not something that you know cat you for dogs for a lot of dogs you just put down it's <coughs> it's food time you put down some food and they eat it if yeah. they don't uh, if they don't eat it, you can say, okay, well, then you don't get to eat. Yeah. And then, you know, and they, they might even go, even really finicky dogs might go, you know, a few days without eating. Um, but you can't do that with cats. Correct. 
Right. So you have to uh, still give them, you have to continuous, continuously give them the option, as you were saying with the bones, continuously give them the option and sometimes trick them. So yeah. what we did was, we may, and we still to this day sometimes have to do that because cats are crazy beings, um, amazing crazy beings. But I call them aliens. Yeah, <laughs> our cats will go on. Uh, will go on strike every once in a while from, say, Turkey. Like all of a sudden, they don't want turkey anymore. Um, so we'll take some um, canned food or some of their favorite treats or something like that and mix it in topper. a meal topper and mix it in to uh, to trick them into eating the food that that we know that they need. Right. Um, but you kind of have to take it at their pace at the same time. There's been too many people that come to us and they're like, my cat won't eat raw because they did like we did with the raw meaty bone. And it's like, they put it down once and the cat didn't want it and they're done. Right. Um, and they're like, they don't like it. I tried that two times. That right. He didn't like it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I don't like it. Well, and I think too, that there's that fear of waste. Uh, yeah. The, waste of food and waste of money, right? They're going to try something new. And I think that that's something that you, you kind of have to prepare yourself. For me, I genuinely had to emotionally prepare myself once I realized that this was not going to be just a, hey, eat the better food, you know, let's go. Um, if I, it was emotionally difficult for me not to give them, I wanted to give them kibble. Yeah. That's what they wanted. She even snuck them kibble sometimes I did when times. I was like, no, yeah. we're not doing it. Yeah. She was like, I mean, we had, sneak we had some kibble. leftover kibble, right? It's not like you just run out completely. So every now and then I just stick my hand and be like, here's a few little kernels. I'm so sorry we're doing this to you. Crap dealer. She's right? a crap dealer. It was difficult though. So I think you have to prepare yourself to understand that you're making the best decision for your cat and that it's going to be, uh, it's gonna, for me, I feel like it was more difficult for me than it was for our cats. Oh, for sure. But giving them it that was. option over time, and studies have shown, there's a study out there that showed that, you know, cats don't like citrus, right? They don't like, it's a, people use it as a, um, a deterrent for certain things. They fed um, a group of cats a citrus flavored food uh, that was nutritionally un, uh, un no. And nutritionally balanced. Right. Uh, they found a what was the, the it was a one? rabbit a and a fish. Yeah, a rabbit and a fish. So it was a it was a study that was done in England. I, I believe. That. And they they um, tested these cats, a group of cats, and they put down these three different foods, and they said which one are they going to go to? And the fish food was um, unbalanced, but it was flavored with fish. The the other food was unbalanced, but flavored with rabbit, or was it chicken? Either way, oh rabbit, and then yeah. the third food was a citru an orange flavored food, but was completely balanced. And they saw that the um, the study showed that the cats immediately went to the fish first, but then over time they would move a little bit to the rabbit. But by the end of the study, they were all eating the orange flavored foods because they knew that that's what was best for their bodies. They didn't didn't necessarily like the flavor. But they knew that it was balanced, and they needed that nutrition in their in their bodies when given the option. Yeah, and it just goes to show that the the patience and perseverance. Um, yeah, you're gonna waste a little bit of food every now and then, especially with raw food. It's not like you can be like, oh, well, that didn't work. We're just gonna save that for later. Um, <clears throat> so you have to be, <clears throat> excuse me, prepared for that. But the transition period, you know, it's different for different cats. But it, but it does mean being persistent and giving them that option. Um, and in different ways, you know, some cats like it, a little bit of wet food mixed in with their kibble to get started. Some of them, it's better to just put it near their kibble so they start identifying it as food. Mm -hmm. Then they want to eat that alone. So there's different ways to do it, but it can be done. And when it is, um, the difference that you'll see in, in your cat is, yes, it's the biggest joy yes absolutely and once they're transitioned it's i mean that coat is completely yeah. Yeah. healthy and they have less shedding and um and you can it's just you see the difference physically in their health yeah yeah no yeah it's amazing to me how quickly customers come back to me and say that it's made a difference in their pets lives and i'm like but it's um, wait six months it's only been three weeks right <laughs> it's only gonna get better and right I you know, and I think the big conviction for me is that I, I feel like we had those extra four years with Scotch, um, where they didn't get a long time to, you know, I mean, I know some of it is the fear, but uh, when he was diagnosed and we didn't take the prescription food, um, I attribute those four years uh, that we had with him to changing his diet and, and smart supplementation. I think that that 
was incredible to see him declining so rapidly. You know, cats, when something starts going bad, it's like, it's, it's not good. Mm. And to see him declining like that, not wanting to climb up the stairs, not jumping on the bed anymore, to just a uh, boom, back to jumping on a refrigerator and onto the island and mm-hmm. back to the bed and running up the stairs. It was, um, it was uh, that's life changing. Right, yeah. life changing. And, and just a big, so much of what happened with him motivates everything that we do. Yep. Well, we, got, we got an extra eight years out of our dog. Wow. She, the vet said she has six months to live and she lived another eight years because we just took her away and started doing stuff ourselves. And that's what started our whole store was, you know, a sick animal. And biggest pet food recall in history. That was oh, the, the melamine recall of 2007, 2008. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't yeah. think I knew that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that about yours. yours. I didn't know that about yours, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we got a sick puppy. That's what started us. As an adult, she was our first, my first puppy that I cared for, right? Where I had responsibility. And we took her, we got her, we had her like a couple of weeks, we took her to the vet, you know, get her puppy stuff, make sure everything's okay. And they said, wow, that's the worst dog we've ever seen. And we're like, what? And they're like, hemi, hemivertebra, spondylosis, brachiocephalic, um, what else? Like everything that could be wrong in a bulldog was wrong. And they're like, and they gave us, gave me the x-rays back and said, you know, you might want to just go get insurance and we never saw you. <laughs> and uh, uh, I said, how about no? And they recommended their special diet and said the dog probably has six months to live. And I said, well, I'm going to go learn more because that's crazy to me. And um, yeah, we gave her another eight years. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that's how so many of us start. And, and I think that's why so many of us are in this. Because it is just, once you know, like, something this awesome, you just want to help others yep. not go through what we went through right. for, yeah. for a number of issues. And, and seeing how much it changes your, your cat's life or your dog's life um, is, is just such great news. When we have people come to us, you know, and a lot of times, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, a lot of times people will come to us after they've been to the vet six times and after yep. they've had everything oh, yeah. They so desperately love their cat. They are willing to try something crazy, yep. like crazy cat ladies. And that that moment, and being able to just meet people where they're at and see what's really going on, and do what we can do from with the information that we have. Um, and it, it's not ever just about our products, you know. It's yeah. always nutrition is foundational. Um, and there's so many great things available, so many resources out there that we have found. Uh, that it's, there's so much help that can be offered. But I think it does start with, you know, kind of hitting that brick wall and wanting to do more and not, not feeling like it's time yet yeah. Yeah. And, and making those changes. Yeah. yeah. Tell me, do you, so do you see with your clients that um, you get, uh, I mean, obviously you probably do, I think it's just the industry, but you get more dog clients than you do cat clients? Cats are second class citizens. And, it, and it's it's a terrible, terrible uh, thing because cats deserve better. And so um, I think we're one of the few raw pet food stores who has four full doors dedicated to cat foods of frozen goods. And then, of course, we have other good products that are fine for cats and dogs, but are more packaged appropriately for dogs in larger sizes. Um, but cats are second class citizens. So I'll have a customer who's been coming to me for five years and then he'll go, blah, 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 blah. And my cat, blah, blah. And I'm like, your cat, he's never bought cat food. And he goes, oh, no, he's fine. He eats the whiskeys or whatever. You know, I'm like, you know, all those cartoons above my freezer door saying cats are obligate carnivores and cats require moisture. And I do all these little simple little cartoons in our store, if you, you know, if you ever see it. And the little cartoon, like I have ones just above me that are just above the freezers for cats. And I'm like, it, it, what do you mean? Like the poor thing, He'll, the, a cat should live with you from 18 to 22 years easily without chronic illness. And, and they're telling me about these cats that are sick at 10 or 12. And it's ridiculous. It's half, half their lives. All because you didn't look up and see that cats could do this too. Uh, Make me crazy. Well, you know, I'm so excited about uh, people like Dr. Marcy Kosky and Dr. Liz Bales that are looking at cats as cats. 
you know, there's so many times where you meet somebody new and you say, do you have any pets? And they'll say, oh, well, I have a cat. Like, it's not really a pet. Yeah. People that will say, I really want to get a dog one day, but I'm going to start with a cat. Like, yeah. it's a practice pet because they're, they're seen as being very independent, very low maintenance. You can travel. You can just throw out a well, bunch of... Well, and they're stoic. You know, they're very stoic beings. You don't so, know when they're not. Yeah, so people think that... Healthy. We have people call us all the time, and they're like, I have a very... I have a senior cat. They're 12. And, you know, a kidney disease will go into... And I'm like, 12 is so young. That's middle age. No, that shouldn't be... That's not even really middle age, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it shouldn't That's be... like 30. <laughs> For 40. Yeah, we're, we're working on 40. We're working on 40. We're working on 40. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, and, and then we have the clients that come to us and we start talking diet. And it's like, have you ever considered a raw food diet? And they're like, I've always fed my dog a raw food diet, but no, I've never thought about my cat. Right. And it's Obligate like carnivores. Yeah. yeah. More I important. Know, I would say almost more important. It is more important. Both very important. Right. I would say almost more important. Yeah. 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 Right. Dogs, dogs being facultative carnivores, they can make use of some other things. Cats, they can't. We have to pre-digest them. Um, when, and when I tell people just moving to canned, but, you know, low carbohydrate can preferably, but just moving to canned will tremendously improve the quality of your, and outcome of your pet's life. We often tell people we don't care what it is. Like yeah. just we'll say just even the worst a moisture rich diet but i think that that's you know that's what i think is so pivotal you know whether you're meeting a client for the first time or we're talking with someone for the first time it's finding out where they're at and not uh you know sometimes it's easy to be like oh my god wait you know but it's it's also easy for us to take a step back 10 years ago and remember where we were at and yeah. what sounded so crazy to me and and not not just that but the time investment, the recognizing that, you know, whether it's simple things, whether it is that you shouldn't clean out your, you should clean out your litter at least every day, you know, maybe once in the morning, once at night, not once a week, right? You should have a litter box that's the right size for your, most litter boxes aren't. You're going to want to prepare food, put your cats in a routine. Wash your their cats dishes in a after every meal. I mean, all right. the things that we should do, even if Little. we're not feeding them a fresh food diet. Yeah. 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 The things that are re required, um, for sure, if you if you do, you know, I mean, right. that we would think that would be right. required. Um, okay, I'm going to give you some of the tips that I give people, and, you, and I need you to add to them, okay? okay? So, one of the tips is feed them in a saucer or a shallow bowl because of whisker fatigue. Uh, I say, have one more litter box than you have cats. Yes. So when there's a dirty litter box and they, they're like, ew, that's disgusting, they don't go in your bed. Um, uh, you know, right? I've actually had that happen, sadly, twice. Um, but that was because of a roommate. That was not because of me. I just want to say. <laughs> um, uh, what, what else was, uh, oh, gosh. Oh, um, put your water in a separate room to your food. Because cats, that's why they often go to the washroom, because there's no food there. Cats, unlike dogs, are smart enough to know that food, uh, meat can poison water. I, I did not know that. Fact. No. Oh my goodness. Not, I mean, we feed our cats all over the all over the house. Um, we don't feed them in a specific. I love area. that tip. But I'll, I'll add to the litter box one, and this is something that we recently learned, and that most people don't know. So we're spreading the news that the the average cat litter box should actually be a length and a half the size of your cat. Nice. So the cat boxes that you that we purchase, or the cat uh, the litter boxes that we purchase at the like Petco or PetSmart or one of the they're probably too small. They're almost always oh, too small and very expensive. So um, what we do now is we get storage bins. They're like seven to nine dollars at the hardware store. You cut a hole in in it cut for a little door. door for them, and oh. um, now you've got the the right size. And we no longer have litter issues since yeah. getting. The, um, the bigger... Yeah, the bigger and the saucer. other thing I would add to your feeding them in saucers, I think, was your, you know, they, they, they make a joke about it, right? Like the middle of the bowl for kibble feeders, the middle of the bowl is empty, and the cat's like, where's my food? And there's tons of food still left in the bowl because they don't like trying to get around there. Yeah. But also, Dr. Liz Bales, great insight into really engaging your cat's instinct. She has the Doc and Phoebe's uh, noble uh, hunting, indoor yeah, hunting Phoebe. system, right? Oh. So, you can put, we use freeze dried, but it's so fun for the cats to get a little bit of food 
you hide it all around the house. So they, they have two, more than 200 million scent sensors in their nose. They know where that food is at. They get to go find it. They get to pull it out. They bat it around to get the food out. It's, it really engages their instincts. So it can be a huge enrichment to their day yeah. instead of just trying to find the nearest sunspot again. If you're, you exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, the, the majority of indoor cats are bored. And bored creates stress. Yeah. And it's 70 plus, the research shows 70 plus percent of, um, of urinary issues in cats stem from stress. So, uh, and, and we know that stress causes a numerous amount of disease. So uh, we want to make sure that we enrich them. And we're learning that it's not almost, it's it, the how you feed your cat is almost as important as what you feed your cat mm -hmm. because they need to be able to have the the um, use their instinctive nature to go through that prey sequence of um, hunting you know stalking hunting catching um, playing with it playing eating grooming mm -hmm. and sleeping like they they need to be able to go through their their instinctive nature um so and there's a lot of ways that you can do that there's you know systems feeding puzzles things like that that you yeah. can use um or you can do it yourself you know you can mm -hmm. hide little bits of food your your in, in little bowls or saucers around the house so they have to find them and um and get them too it, it doesn't have to be expensive Fantastic tip. I mean, we do the same thing with our dogs. Currently, I don't have a cat. I don't want to introduce a cat into this household given the current dogs I have, although we've had a cat that they lived with fine in the past. Um, but currently where their energy's at and all that, I don't think it would be a happy household. <laughs> and so we don't currently have a cat, although I love having a cat. But the tip of playing find it and just hiding little things around and making that a fun game for them on a rainy day um, when they can't go out to the catio um, uh, is, is absolutely, it's m like a bad math problem for them. At the end of it, they're tired. Yeah, they yeah. love it. And it reduces, the studies show it reduces their stress. Yeah. Because they had to use their brains. Yeah, they, they had, yeah, exactly. You can't yeah. get neurotic. They can't get neurotic when they've had a strong math problem for the last hour and a half. And I think it's interesting, it, uh, we fall into this as well, you know, Zorro loves to play fetch, and we love it so much. I mean, you ask him where his ball is, and I'm sure he's going to come up here and be like, where is it? <laughs> um, it it's so exciting, but Dr. Liz Bales was saying as well, you know, she's done so much research, and finding this innovative way to help engage their instincts and accomplish a number of things, she was like, I'm always fascinated by people who uh, think that their cats are small dogs. Cats yeah. are... You know, and Dr. Karen Becker points out, cats are absolutely, completely unique, different creatures. It's not cats and dogs. You know, it's, cats are completely different. They, they uh, express and accept love differently. They do all of life in their, own, in their own way. So the more that we can learn about them, not just their nutritional needs, but their environmental needs, what, what we can do to engage them and build their confidence even, uh, especially in multi-cat households as we've learned. Uh, it's really illuminating and it makes such a difference. It's very exciting. Yeah. Well, I have to say, mentioning the multi-cat household, I think if you own a cat, you should own two. Yeah, I yeah. gave that advice to somebody today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually said, here's a few tips and went through like number one, number two, number six was consider another cat. <laughs> because, um, because yeah, cats, I mean, feral cats, the reason there are feral cat communities and the communal. You know, because they're communal cats they do like um the company of other felines yeah i think that of dogs and hedgehogs and guinea pigs too yeah. they're all they all come from community and they should all have at least one buddy to live with yes i agree or seven or, <laughs> well i'm not quite the cat crazy you know that <laughs> guy you know so I would say, you know, I'm, I'm okay with two, although I do lean towards thinking I should have a pack of five dogs instead of one, but then, you know, my neighbors would really hate me. <laughs> you have to be I get enough barking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, and, and then uh, uh, what do you look for when you're buying a commercial food? Let's say if you're just moving from a dry, which is what 90 some odd percent of people do, right? Is feed dry food, bagged foods. Um, when you're moving from a dry, what do you look for in a canned food? So, it, well, yeah, so here's the, here's the tricky part, because I was also consulting with, about this specifically today, and, um, and it's really tricky because when you're coming from, you know, a Purina dry or a Meow Mix or something like that, and it's just, 
um, you, you don't know anything, then what advice can we give? And my, my first advice when I was like, step one, let's, let's make sure that the, that the first several ingredients are meat. Mm -hmm. Let's also make sure that it doesn't have certain ingredients like carrageenan in it, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, and let's start there. That's a good starting spot because you're probably going to, like, you're going to have to go through quite a few to not find carrageenan and to find meat in the first few. So you're probably going to get, you're going to get a better quality. But the problem is, is that some of these, um, some of these cat foods may have, uh, they're very deceptive with their ingredients. And I know where their ingredients come from. But telling, you know, a novice that's like, I want a better quality wet food to go find out where your the company sources their ingredients and, you know, all of this stuff is, is a little bit too much or overwhelming. I don't want to overwhelm somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I mean, knowing your source is always the, you know, the, the most important thing. If you know your source and you know where the ingredients are coming from. Then and, and, and pet food will show that so well. Yes. The, the Cole, Cole Harrington's documentary, Pet Fooled, showed that sourcing is as important as ingredients. Exactly. And that's really a good place for people that are open. You know, I think I've shared that with almost everybody I've ever talked to about pets to, yeah. to just watch Pet Fooled. Um, you know, that's a great place for people to kind of get an idea. He did a great job of just laying it out and the common sense of it. Uh, and, but you'll find, too, that, you know, people, friends, have you, have you actually seen Pet Fooled yet? And they're like, no, I haven't seen it yet. So, I mean, you have to have that um, motivation in a way. And I think, sadly, so many of us find that motivation through something negative. But, you know, it's like you said earlier, when you're looking at transitioning, moisture is such an important ingredient for our cats. So, start. yeah, we don't want to overwhelm them with, okay, so you're going to do this. Here's, you know, 72 things to look for. <laughs> them to, to start somewhere. Um, and we always recommend going to your local pet food boutique. It's different than going to these big box stores and checking, you know, there's a 307 different kinds of uh, uh, canned food there that, you know, are basically all the same. You know, we really encourage them to go, A, shop local. But these pet food, um, pet food boutiques or these smaller stores, stores. yeah, they, they, I think they, in our experience, they make an effort to, tr to at least try to know why they're carrying a product. And so they can, you can go in there and you can ask questions. You know, say, I am just transitioning from kibble. I, I want to get my cat on raw. What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. and, and just go there and start gathering some information. We can only ever recommend what we feed. So it's difficult to say, you know, this is it. You know, you've got two choices. Well, there's no one thing. That's the whole point. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to a, a wet food, there sometimes we'll use a wet food to re-trick our babies as you know a meal topper to mix in so that they're more enticed and they're feeling um, a little picky. Um, very, there's very few wet foods that we're that we feed. I mean, the mm -hmm. raw foods we love variety, variety of proteins, variety of brands, um, but we can only recommend what we feed. So it's difficult to say, you know. Yeah. And, uh, we do recommend that people always do keep, especially with cats, some canned into their diet so that when they go away, they, uh, somebody can care for them easily with a food that they already accept. Yeah. 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 We, we're very we, lucky. We, we, we searched and found uh, uh, pet centers that are raw friendly nice. and, and we give ample amounts yeah. of instructions on exactly how much of this and that and how to mix it how and how to warm it up and how we gotta, yeah <laughs> so are you routine feeders do you have a very set routine or are you the guy the kind of guys who want to switch it up on a regular basis in order to so for me uh, i think that um not being routine is actually a healthier way to go than being routine because what we're doing when we have routine is we're training the pancreas to be ready at three in uh, food rather than be ready for whenever food comes. And so uh, I like to switch it up. I like to say two meals today, four meals tomorrow, you know, skip a, uh, skip a meal the next day, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it keeps my dogs on the toes and they're less likely to bug me at three o'clock or 6 a.m. or whatever because they know it's coming eventually. They just have no idea when. Um, and so which of, uh, in the scenario, that scenario, which two are you, which of those two are you guys? We are more routine feeders. Now on yeah. the weekends, we switch it up. 
um, and our cats hate us for it. But um, <laughs> do they know? It, oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but there is some there is some research that shows that routine for cats also reduces reduces stress. Okay. So, feed at the same time every day if you um, change the litter at the same time every day and we've noticed that with our high anxiety oh, yeah. cat it makes a world of difference for their stress if they know that they want to know when they're going to be fed when their their litter yeah. is going to be scooped all of that so that they have their own routine right stress low so yeah. um so yeah so we do a, a pretty strict routine except for the weekends and the yeah. weekends it's you know we're just like always busy and doing and, whatever and, and lunch times kind of gets switched up too i mean We'll do the um, Doc and Phoebe's yeah. hundreds and put them around the house for like a little lunchtime snack um, or, or just give them a full meal. But, you know, I think that yeah. especially with Pooh Bear, and maybe it is more so with cats that have high anxiety or anxiety issues that we've really seen such a difference. And to the point where um, Pooh Bear will literally, he knows when I'm changing, it, when I'm cleaning his litter, he will sit there patiently and wait <laughs> for me to finish. And then goes in and does his business. I mean, and it's uh, it's been a game changer for him. He's definitely been a big uh, insight into a lot of the behavioral issues that can happen with a high stress cat. Yeah. Um, so finding those routines that are a comfort to him have been a big uh, game changer for, for our whole household. Yeah. Talking about anxiety for cats, I've often found taking cats who are super anxious and putting them on a fresh food diet can reduce that anxiety getting them off of a sugar diet, essentially. Oh, for sure, because you're thinking about, you yeah. think about the inflammation that that causes in the body, that these, the, the sugar, these carbs that, that create in the body, and what we call that is nutritional stress, um, but, it, but it leads to, you know, behavioral stress as well. But if when, when and it's same with us, right? If we eat nothing but a whole bunch of unhealthy, carbohydrate-heavy foods, um, for, me, for me specifically, I have anxiety issues. And my anxiety will be much higher when I have less exercise and I'm eating unhealthy. I am um, more stressed. But when I have a healthier food, when I'm eating a, a better diet, then I'm less stressed. Same goes for our cats in that way and dogs for that matter. Yeah. No, I think it makes a huge difference. It makes a difference. And I think uh, also just the play, one of the big things that while you were talking, I was thinking just what a difference it makes uh, it made for our Pooh Bear who, you know, when the kittens came, he was a little like, not quite sure about this. And of course the kittens are just nothing but play balls. I mean, they want to play all the time. And Biddles and Twist and Scotch at the time were all kind of like, ooh, it's playtime, let's do this. Pooh Bear was like, nah, brah, and out he would go. He wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, and Dr. Marcy Kosky, Feline Behavior Solutions, really had such great insight into the fact that a cat that doesn't want to play is a liar. They want to play. They want to engage. They want to hunt and chase and catch and all of that. And we're like, not our Pooh Bear. She was like, take him into a room by himself. Engage him at his own pace and play with him. It, we now catch him playing with the kittens. Yep. Nice. It, and she said it, it builds their confidence. It's kind of like, it's just a little too much going on here. And we only went through one session of that. Yeah. One Before session, she really like started 20 minute changing. session. And they learn fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if you can see that he's like, this isn't something you'd be fearful of or get away or hiss or bat or anything. Now it's something that he can engage in. It's, it's really taking his anxiety down to where he's feeling comfortable. So it's an amazing thing. Um, it's got, uh, Pooh Bear is really our first real uh, experience with a high anxiety cat that deals with a number of health issues because of that. Um, and it's just been illuminating and just wonderful to see the changes when you can kind of try to look at life on your cat's level and find out what what are we missing? What can we do to make this a better situation? Yeah. And uh, I have to say that you guys, in, at the show that I met you at, um, uh, I learned about Jackson Ga Galaxy. I haven't had cable television in 20 years, so I'd never heard of him. And uh, he's got, while I only sell the bowls, he's got a whole line of products that lay out on the label all the reasons why you're doing that for your cat. And it really can, those labels can really open your eyes as to the cat behavior or the animal you're living with. It's amazing. He's oh. done some great research. Oh yeah, he's, he's the, he is like the cat whisperer. And I think it's interesting when people, you know, you can go down the rabbit hole there. I, and I encourage people to go 
look and see what's available because there are things that we just never considered before. It's like litter boxes. So yeah. The litter box that we got because it's a litter box is not something that's happy for our cat. And the most expensive and, and largest one at the store. Yeah. Still wasn't even big enough. $40 for a litter box. And Pooh Bear doesn't touch it. But I mean, that would be 65 not, bucks here. I'm sorry? <laughs> That'd be like 65 bucks here. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the Canadian currency. But I think, you know, Jackson Galaxy is a great, not only is he entertaining, but he is, uh, he, you watch some of his, how he is able to hone in on what the issue is and then just through small implementations can change an entire dynamic of a whole of a household. A lot of the best ones I think are when you're dealing with a cat that's not having a good time with a kid and he'll just be like, well, look at this. It's just so illuminating. Not to mention the fact that he does carry a full line of stuff that just reading the labels will yeah. let you better consider what your cat's what your life cat, is like. Yeah, what yep. Yeah, I was really impressed with his labeling and, and him explaining why the fishing rod toy was good for certain types of cats and why the, the bird toy was better for other types of cats and, you know, whether they're mousers or birders and all that. I just thought it was, uh, it was illuminating. Yeah, and not, not, you know, I think when we think of cats, our experience has been a lot of people look at them as convenience companions. It's like, I want, I want a pet to come home to at night. And they, don't, and they think cats are just very independent, low maintenance, you know, just want, and then they're upset that they don't want to snuggle or they hate it when you pick them up or whatever. It's, it's very interesting to see that when you take some time to look at, look at life from your cat's perspective, um, they're not a convenience pet. They're, they're a very intricate, uh, complex creature yeah. that could be, <laughs> you're, you're getting bombarded. That, that can be one of the most rewarding companion animals out there if we take some time to really respect who they are. Yes. Yeah, they're far more complex creatures than people give them credit for. Yes. Yeah, very much so. But, you know, later on down the line. And so, in your recipes, do you use organs? Do you use the kidneys and livers and pancreas and things of this nature? We call it, or Adrian calls it, oh, awful. awful. <laughs> uh, it's awful. O, o F F A L. Yeah, yeah I know. Oval. It's she awful. calls it awful, it awful. because. <laughs> Because it's so gross. But yes, absolutely. So um, we've recently partnered with Ronnie from Perfectly Rawsome, who is now formulating our recipes for us um, for our DIY um, homemade uh, cat foods on a budget on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where we where we make um, home, help other people make their raw food at home um, and without breaking the bank. And, um, and we use her recipes now. And that's um, Ronnie Lejeune. Ronnie Lejeune from per PerfectlyRawesome.com? Correct. Yes, yeah, PerfectlyRawesome.com. And, um, and yeah, you, I mean, they need it. You think about all the, like, when we're talking about feeding a fresh food diet or raw meat, um, people, a lot of people come to us and they're like, so you just give your cat, like, hamburger meat? And yeah. it's like, no, that's not, that. it needs no to be sense. a balanced diet. And right. so it, it needs the organ needs. It needs, we need heart and we need kidneys and we need, you know, all of these other ingredients um, or some other ingredients. It's not super complex, but we need it in order right. to balance the diet and make sure they're getting all the nutrients and taurine and, and vitamins and minerals and whatnot that they need. Yeah, and the amino acids being taurine. And so um, I think that, uh, uh, that when, some, when you and I, or people, humans, think of meat, they think of roasts or, or birds, right? So they're muscle meats or they're birds. Um, but when a dog or a cat thinks, or a ferret or hedgehog thinks of uh, fresh or food, it's meat, fat, bone, and organ. So there's three of those things that when we say it, we don't even think of consume yeah it's very, very for the most part yeah i mean Although it's, I was in japan and they're like you feed all the organs we eat the organs <laughs> no my mom grew up on liver and um, so did mine yeah right uh, we don't yeah. <laughs> i don't like the liver no don't like the liver. I, well, well, we I, probably should but you're right i don't either hard. i can't hard. say that I'm, I'm not gonna be one of those people to say i don't like the liver because i don't think i've ever Jeez. tried it I thought so I did. I it was the what's the thing? What's the duck liver that people are like? Um, the uh, no, there's like some weird foie gras. Foie gras. Oh, foie gras. Yeah. Foie gras. I had that once in France. It was disgusting. <laughs> it's liver. Of course, it's disgusting. <laughs> I right. like bone marrow though. That was very, very, very good. 
Oh yeah. Well, if it's done correctly, like anything, if it's done right, it can be good, you know? Um, but so often they're not. <laughs> and, and even for our pets, I mean, we overdo it for the most part. Now, uh, just to, to wrap up, um, in regards to supplementation, what are the ones you absolutely want to see in any fresh food or any diet? Because I have the same recommendations for fresh food as I have for kibbles, because I don't believe the balanced and complete is actually a real thing in nutrition. I don't think that's possible. And so I want to see some similar things in kibble and raw, but what do you guys look for? What do you guys recommend to people to add to the diet? Yeah. So we, we, yeah, we have the three, Three basics that we recommend for the same with whether you're feeding a processed food or whether you're feeding a fresh food um, we recommend digestive enzymes probiotics and omegas in in every diet these are like the three basics that we'll add to every to all of our cat's food um, every meal and that we suggest uh, for, for our followers to do as well regardless of the food that they feed and for many reasons you know like if it's a processed food it's usually missing all of that. Um, if it's um, even if it's a fresh food, digestive enzymes, for instance, if we're not feeding pancreas within that food, then they're not getting all the digestive enzymes that their bodies can use and utilize. Um, and you can't overdose on any of this stuff. So let's make sure that they're getting the the uh, the right amount of mm -hmm. these uh, nutrients that they need. Yeah, and and uh, the pancreas is an underlooked um, at uh, uh, organ meat for the dogs and cats. I find that cats find it very palatable; that they actually really like it. Um, if you thaw it out, it starts to digest itself in the bowl. Um, and we eat pork pancreas, so it comes from an om omnivore. So it has uh, the protease, amylase, cellulase, all the all the different digestive enzymes built into it. Um, even things that your cat or dog cannot make. And so um, uh, I think that it's an underrated organ and it's damned hard to buy. It is. It is. But I'll tell you, our one, one pet food company that we, that's here locally that we feed the majority of uh, our food, uh, our cats, so it's, it's like the main one that the, the cats love the most. Um, he often adds in pancreas into the meals and he switches it up for, it's mainly for Zorro. He, he switches it up um, and adds, you know, it, it, like every two weeks, it's a different uh, recipe. food recipe. Um, but uh, he oftentimes adds pancreas in, and I think that's awesome. And they love it. All yeah. the cats actually try to eat his food. Um, yeah. and we've often sold it just by itself. Where do you, awesome. where do you, where do you get it? Uh, well, I have a, a local company who sources it from a, a local pork farm up island. And so they're not, they're not factory farmed. Um, and, and it's island grown, um, but it's a big enough organization that it can keep our local pets, a pet, uh, raw pet, one of our local raw pet manufacturers, uh, stocked up, but it's sometimes when there's not been a call for a while, it's not available. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome though. Yeah. We try to work with, while we prefer the, the, the uh, guys who are doing things that are professional, like HACCP or um, some of the quality certifications or some of those kinds of things, while we certainly prefer those kinds of guys or guys who are headed towards that, um, we also like to work with local guys to build local industry to assist them in making a valuable business that helps our community. And so, but the nice thing about them is they're close enough. We can go and look every once in a while. We just randomly drop in and visit and they're like, oh, uh, hi. And, you know, hey, yeah, I'm the guy who sells a lot of your fit. I'm just randomly showing up, seeing how you're doing it. <laughs> that's awesome, though. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do Yeah. To run, right. a, to run a business that meets your values. Right, yeah. And that's what's so important. I think that uh, we were just talking, especially when we're dealing with supplements, it's like, well, what, what do you recommend? And you can go into a number of stores and be like, well, all of this stuff is good. And I kind of equated to walking into a GNC and being like, well, all of these supplements are, I just grab a whole shelf full of them, you know, because they're good. And I think that it's so important to remember, and I think it was uh, Rodney Habib and Dr. Karen Becker that said, it's very important to know why you're supplementing. You know, you don't want to throw the kitchen sink at your cat. It's, there are some things that are helpful for overall maintenance and prevention, yeah. especially for a lot of these very common issues that are out there for cats. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want to make their meals uh, unenjoyable, right. uh, and and certainly don't want to just you know 
not know why you're doing something. Right. And I think that it's really exciting when you can look at what your cat needs and you can understand their nutritional needs and then look at what you can maybe add on top to to help maintain health or prevent certain things. Yeah. That there's there's so much out there that we can do and and there's so much good that can come from uh, especially in you know in our own experience having kibble fed cats for so long, not really knowing. And then when we finally do make make those little changes, one of Jade's favorite phrases is a little bit goes a long, long way. You don't have to be crazy about it. You start yeah. taking baby steps, you start yeah. seeing that difference and it's really an exciting time. But you do too many things at once, you don't know what was successful and what wasn't. Exactly. Very exactly. true. And we use a, we use a lot more um, when it comes to supplements, we use curcumin, we use um, ubiquinol for our older cats. And awesome. we use a lot of a lot of different supplements as well, um, but the, those three are are recommended recommended staples. And, you know, we do it for other reasons, but the other products. But for for those three, it's just like a, I, well, I think it's good for overall good health. The gut health is the foundation over uh, um, the foundation of our immune response to everything. And so the healthier we can make that gut, the healthier that we keep that animal. But that's true of the mouth too. An unhealthy mouth points to an unhealthy animal. Yeah. And I say I'm all about the healthy poops as well. So keep an eye wow. on yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can tell you, I always know when it's the neighbor dog, neighbor's dog who had a poop in my yard. <laughs> it's very different. It's easier to clean out the litter box when you got a raw fed cat. Yeah. Exactly. It is. It really is. Yeah, it's funny, but it's a terrible thing to have a conversation about. But I do, we do it weekly in the store. Yeah, uh, you know. we talk about, I talk about it all the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so, uh, uh, is there any one last tip you wanted to offer uh, uh, somebody interested in fresh foods uh, before we call it an interview? Well, I would say take the leap. Don't be scared. Um, don't wait too long. Don't wait till it's too late. Um, and, you know, and, and like Adrian just That's said, make, no, I mean, we're talking about how, you know, it's yeah. it, oftentimes we wait until it's too late to make that difference, to make that change. Um, and we don't want you to wait until it's too late with your, with your cats at start small, start a little, a little bit, bit at a time, give them, you know, an option and, um, and, and, you know, build it up over time. You'll notice a difference. Immediately. Well, and the one thing I would add to that is I think that it, you know, if you're thinking about it, reach out to us. If you want yeah. little tips and tricks, if you want just some support while you're doing this transition, if you have questions along the way, uh, we're so excited to help. And um, it's been the best decision we've made. And that would be my only regret. So we waited uh, as long as we did. And so, okay, on that, um, tell us your website, uh, your email, that the uh, general, general email uh, box and the platforms that people can find you on. Okay, so our website is twocrazycatladies.com, a T-W-O, crazycatladies.com. Um, and then um, it's, it's usually best to, uh, to find us on social media because um, we are there all the time. Um, you can find us both on Instagram and Facebook at the Two Crazy Cat Ladies, so T-H-E, T-W-O, crazycatladies.com, or not .com, but the Two Crazy yep. Cat Ladies. Um, and our email is just info at two crazy cats. Are you on YouTube as well? Oh, we are. Oh, yes. Yeah, we yes, are. You. Yeah, you the can, you can find all, you can find all of our videos and info and stuff like that. But if you want to reach out to us, try um, Facebook or Instagram or or email or our website. Well, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Thanks, guys. Here. Uh,